Weren't you also required to clear a Bradley at one point? Why would they call you a small arms repairman? Um, because technically... <laughs> because technically a Bradley is small arms? Yeah, technically, as far as the army is concerned, the M242 chain gun on the front of a Bradley is considered small arms. Good grief. I, I would tell the story about me having to clear the Bradley, but it is a long story and it kind of makes me really angry. So one night I'm sleeping in my barracks room in Iraq. Someone comes and starts pounding on my door and wakes me up. Specialist, get up, get up. There's someone on the phone for you. All right, fine. So I go answer the phone. And it's somebody from one of the other companies, and they're telling me, we need you to come over to this gate over here and uh, clear Bradley. All right, where, where's the gunner? Well, he's gone. Where's the driver? He's gone too. Where's the tank commander? He is also gone. Where was everybody out to lunch? When they said gone, I assumed they meant that everybody in this Bradley had been killed and they had towed it back to the gate and that they needed me to come clear it before they brought it into the base because... You can't just be driving a armored vehicle around with a 25 millimeter chain gun loaded on it through a base with people in it. Why not? You know somebody would be stupid and be like, look, I'm a gunner, ha <laughs> ha, and then they would just rip 12 rounds through the side of a building. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. So the next day I found out from somebody else that what had happened is some of the people on gate guard had noticed that there was just a Bradley driving up and down one of the main routes by itself with no other vehicles with it. That, that's abnormal. They're normally part of a caravan, right? Yeah, they're normally part of a convoy. Why is this Bradley driving around by itself? So they get in a Humvee, they drive out to there. It keeps trying to drive away. They can't get a hold of him on any, on any radio frequencies. So they basically just park right in front of it and take like 20 minutes to coax this driver out of the vehicle. I, I'm still not sure why he was driving around by himself. What happened was this Bradley was part of a armored vehicle convoy. And this Bradley got hit with an IED. Everybody was a little shooken up, but they were okay. So they moved the Bradley to a different spot in the convoy. It got hit with another IED. So they moved it to another spot in the convoy. And it got hit with another IED. At this point, this Bradley has been hit with three IEDs now. The gunner and the tank commander of this Bradley suddenly decide, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done being in this Bradley. So they get out of the Bradley and leave the driver, who is a 19-year-old kid and has never been outside the wire in Iraq before, in the vehicle by himself. Ten minutes later, guess what happens? The Bradley gets hit with another IED. This one is so bad that it knocks out the comms in the vehicle, meaning that it, the driver can no longer talk to anybody else. The driver hits his head against the inside of the vehicle, gets knocked unconscious, and the rest of the convoy goes, he's got to be dead, and leaves. The vehicle is still functional after being hit four times? And they leave him, completely forgetting the first part of the, of the soldier's creed, I will never leave a fallen comrade. They just leave him. Didn't even grab his dog tags? No, nothing. The rest of the convoy just went, fuck it, Brrr, drove off. Driver wakes up. He's suffered a serious concussion, doesn't know where he is, doesn't know why he's in, the si in a Bradley by himself, doesn't know where anybody else is, or why he's bleeding from the side of the head. Jeez. Can't reach anybody on the radio. The Blue Force tracker system is down, so he can't figure out where anybody else is. So he just starts doing the only thing he can think to do, which is drive up and down the main route all by himself, looking for the rest of his convoy because he assumes there's no way they would leave me behind. Why would they leave me? This poor 19 year old kid got left all by himself in the middle of Iraq because his tank commander and his gunner decided they didn't want to be in a vehicle that got blown up anymore. It was incredibly irresponsible of pretty much everybody in that convoy. I can only hope that the lieutenant or officer who was in charge of that convoy got his ass handed to him and got court-martialed and was never in a position of command ever again.